Barbell Brigade. I'm Gio. I'm Mark Smelly Bell, the inventor of the Slingshot, owner of Super Training Gym, and I'm here to see what's up with some of these guys. I'm Lou. <laughs> I'm Silent Mike. Oh, that's it? You're not going to do Inventor of Barbell Brigade, owner of Just Kidding Films. <laughs> <laughs> Own this Director. Entire, this entire establishment. Producer. Editor. Yeah. No. Continue. Definitely not a model, though. So I'm glad you didn't put that in there. <laughs> International Man of Mystery. <laughs> All right, guys. Would you say it's necessary? I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that I was a big I one. Hunk, he's a hunk of man right here. Look at this guy. He benches 303. <laughs> He just gave me the bad news that he only benches 300 pounds. <laughs> there goes his man card. 315. Right. Is Would you say that it's necessary to train with a partner in order to get stronger? Hell oh, yeah. I think uh, yeah, you need some good people around you to be able to lift some big weights. So you do. So you do need it. Yeah, you need a bunch of people. I think, not rather than just one person. I think you need a, a group. You need some people. You need some friends. What does that do for you? It just gets you fired up. Like you have some days where you're gonna be hyped up and you'll have some days where you're down. So days where I'm down and Silent Mike is fired up, it helps me get fired up. Just, you know, some days you're in a great mood and some days you're not, so. I'm the wing beneath his wing. Wing, wing beneath oh, his wing. you're so close. He's the, he's the buffalo sauce, wing sauce underneath oh, my wings. You too. <laughs> you're, the, you're the ranch dressing to my celery. Oh my God. I'm the peanut to your butter. Frank's butter's red hot. Yeah. I would say, uh, <laughs> I don't like the word necessary because I don't like to live in like black and white. Um, but I would say that it's 100% helpful. Are you helpful. racist? I know. <laughs> no, I like a little bit of brown, a <laughs> little bit of yellow, a little bit of everything. <laughs> um, because there are some freaks out there. Like Dan Green trained by himself for a long time. Mike Tashir is kind of known for training by himself. Uh, our boy Bryce Lewis trains by himself yeah, in a oh, dungeon. True. So there are people that can get away with that. But I'd say, you know, the majority of people are gonna be better off for the exact reasons Mark said. Yeah, I feel like uh, you're kind of able to hold yourself or each other accountable, you know, and it, it kind of creates this friendly, almost rivalry where you guys all put, everybody kind of pushes each other, you know, like one person does good, you can really feed off of that and uh, you, you can kind of push yourself to like train harder and push more weight and stuff and kind of like you guys said, um, sometimes the energy's not there not because you don't want it to be, but because like other factors, like you might be tired from another day or, and I feel like, it, it feels like being part of a team and I think that's a lot of fun, you know. Being... So do you just not train bench with anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> when I'm you lifted, I, I, wanna, I wanna have a lot of fun when I'm lifting. And uh, lifting can be boring and talking about the reps and the sets of all the stuff can be boring. And just the monotony of trying to get better can be really fucking boring. It takes a long time to build strength it's not something that happens overnight, and so you might as well have some friends around, yeah. kick it with, and, and have a good time while you're doing it. How do you do it, Gio, when you have no friends? I have a ton of friends, oh. but this show's not about me, Mike. Oh, oh, oh. and back to me! <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to know, so everyone that you listed basically are like the freaks in, in our sport, right? Um, so then would you say that it takes a certain type of person to just like be able to push themselves and take, take themselves to the next level, or is it that, um, everyone else that trains only gets to like maybe a subpar or like maybe a slightly above average, like, uh, what is it, uh, training? Yeah, yeah. I'd say um, it's uh, mostly just personality because there's gyms and Mark, uh, like Westside Barbell. Uh, Mark, you know, trained there. The best multiply guys in the world trained there, Dave Hoff and, and et cetera, where those guys are literally world record holders. Uh, the Lillibridge family, they train together, they have a group. Um, so I think it's more personality. I don't know. I mean, I think it's just like a preference, you know, and I, I think personality does take a, a role in as far as like your training because I feel like it's just like the determination and like the willingness to like sacrifice all your time into training like really hard, you know, because it becomes a job if you really want to be the best, you know, like you got to be willing to push it to the limit, yeah. do whatever it takes and just like... Whatever it takes? <laughs> <laughs> I think some people don't have time, you know, that's what they're worried about. They don't have time to like meet up with a training partner yeah. and worry about the training partner is as, as into the training as they are. Yeah. And so they just maybe just want to do it by themselves and not really worry about uh, the other guy being accountable for being there on time and being yeah. as psyched up to, to lift as they are. Uh, but in general, I think you're always better off with more people rather than less people. You need people to give you feedback when you're lifting. Right. You also need a spot, like you want to try to keep things safe if, if you fall or whatever with a weight. Uh, hopefully it's a little, uh, a little less tragic if someone's able to spot you and help you with the weight back into the rack. Yeah. 
rather than you just completely wiping out by yourself. So I think it's important to have some people around. You're trying to, what we're trying to create all the time with super training and barbell brigade is trying to create a community, a community of people that want to get together, that want to get better, that want to get stronger, and everyone has similar goals. Right. Uh, you can go to any 24 hour fitness and there's, you know, this person over here has this goal. Oh, I want to lose 10 pounds of fat, which would be silent Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and you have, and you have this person over here that wants to get stronger. This person wants to get bigger and everything's really divided. Someone wants it's to bench so three much. plates <laughs> <laughs> for the first time ever <laughs> with, before I've age 40. Did, I've already done it. <laughs> Touch and go. I have it. I Touch swear. It's so much better when everyone has a similar goal. Yeah, absolutely. Would you also give this advice to like a beginner? Would you say like, oh, actually just train with a, you know, just find a professional or, or someone that's like, you know, like uh, get a trainer and then train with them. Or would you say like, eh, it's cool to just train with your friends. I think that's a fine line. Yeah. Cause like, that's why my name's Silent Mike. Like I wasn't a beginner. I'd already been powerless for a while, but like you have to tread lightly. You have to go, or go in with respect. Especially like I was pretty lucky to jump into like world record holder world like Mark plus like three other guys were squatting a thousand pounds. I have huge arms from Jack. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> He's really lucky. Tiny, tiny quads, lucky. but a huge squat. Tiny arms, small bench. But I think I feel like uh, you also have to remove yourself. You have to learn when to remove yourself uh, if like the people around you are negative. Yeah. You know, like if those people are lazy and like they don't have like the same determination and like the drive and the energy that you're putting into like the training, you know, those people are wasting your time. And like, those are the people that you don't need as far as like to progress in training. And maybe even outside of life, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, like uh, if you have a goal, like you gotta be willing to push it and just try to give it as much as you can at the moment. Cause obviously it's not gonna be hundred percent every single day. It's just as long as you, you're giving it everything you got. Uh, but there is people who will be holding you back and those are the people that you don't need to train with. Why don't we live together, buddy? Hey man, let's do it. Maybe get you some sort of bench going. <laughs> yeah, what Mark said though is like a, lifting pals. We're all just kind of lucky, you know, to have places like obviously you created Barbell Brigade, but you didn't hand pick every member to be awesome or you kind of hand pick the employees, but not really, you know, like you got lucky and we got lucky with some of the community and guys that just stroll through the door that train with us daily. Uh, so it's harder for people kind of out there, like Mark said, stuck at 24. I agree with what you say though, but I feel like that's why we kind of like, you guys gravitate towards us and we gravitate towards you guys because we all have yeah, like we this. Okay, yeah, we do. Okay, Let it even, out. Even though I have a baby out. bench. Let it out. We still all work hard, <laughs> especially me for my bench. All right guys, so why do you think uh, fat loss is such an important goal and why do you think that people have such a hard time committing to that? Let's go to the yeah. fattest guy on the table. <laughs> Ooh, take it away. I like how you always point fingers, but I think it's you. All the pose down yeah. right now. How fat am I? <laughs> oh, How's that? Oh Damn, God. he's massive. <laughs> That's what she said? God. Yeah. Um, you're talking like general people. Everybody yes. wants to look good, I think. Yeah, I think number one is people want to look good, but number two is I think people are understanding that um, body composition plays a huge role in general health. Uh, the fatter you are, the more likely you are, the more body fat you have, the more likely you are for heart problems, obviously things like diabetes, uh, cholesterol, kind everything kind of continues. Means. Diabetes, isn't it? <laughs> kind of like diabetes, <laughs> kind of like diabetes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and stuff like that, rather than back in the day, perhaps people were more focused on like eating lettuce because they thought that was going to get you healthy, whereas lifting weights, being active in whatever nature and having um, somewhat of a healthy body fat range, you're going to be a little better off. I think the good news is people are recognizing that they have more fat on their body than they want, which is, can be a good thing. And so people are trying to get healthier, they're trying to lose body fat, trying to be jacked and tan, trying to look good and lift good at the same time. Um, but it's a uh, it's difficult thing so that's why people yo-yo up and down so much it's hard to stay consistent with uh, diet and people tend to like want to try like tricks they want like something yeah. fast and easy to do and it can be very simple to lose weight um, but it does take time and it does take a large change in your lifestyle which can be really difficult for people to follow I think the question in itself that you said uh, uh, fat loss is important because people always just say like weight loss or yeah. what you weigh mm -hmm. and that's a big difference like we don't really want weight loss weight loss isn't like the goal for health or looking good what's, or what's the difference between both of them so in my idea when people say obviously i'm talking general kind of dumb downturns but you go weight loss you're just focusing on the scale going down well you could be burning muscle, muscle. you yeah. no one ever looked worse with more muscle i think that it's we, similar yeah. to strength is a weakness yeah. yeah i mean i think we're transitioning finally though like from just weight loss to like uh, other goals 
Like people actually want to get strong yeah, now. I'm, I'm pretty sure things are very different. I mean, uh, I think that uh, media and just like, uh, it portrays a lot of skinny people and stuff like that. And nowadays, like, you know, you have your magazine, you know, like that. And I feel like your magazine is a pioneer as far as Power like magazine. promoting strength, you know, like I don't think there was, there's like muscle and fitness and always yeah. the focus is muscle, but it's not so much about strength or just like, um, you know, transitioning from just bodybuilding to also strength goals or being faster. Yeah. Not so much just about being like slim and burning muscle and burning fat. Like people are, are broadening their horizons as far as like their goals and how they want to look and stuff like that too. I think there's a lot of things that uh, can count for that too. Cause like there's obviously YouTube that we all try to push mm -hmm. and preach like what we think is the right way, yeah. uh, the healthy way to do it. And hopefully what helps you mentally and physically. There's guys like Kevin Hart, The Rock, like that oh, are showing true. that like performance is more important yeah. rather than just like, the Rock's not out there like, hey, 30 day weight loss challenge. Yeah. The Rock's out there fucking lifting weights and then everybody thinks he's dope and then that's how. It, and so know, is Kevin Hart. Yeah, huh? he's hustling. Yeah. Hustle Hart, hashtag. <laughs> hustle Hart, is that his? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hustle Hart. He's in, he's yeah, in hard great. in the gym, which yeah, is pretty yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Why do you think it's so difficult then for people to commit and stick to that? I know you kind of touched on it yeah. and you know, people want the shortcuts and whatnot. Yeah, I think that's just the American way, sadly. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it can be difficult because you have so many convenient and fast foods at your fingertips that it's easy to grab a hold of, uh, you know, some junk. So it's also, easy. it's also way too easy to, you know, celebrate and to say, oh, it's Mike's birthday or it's, you know. Lou Benz 315. Yeah, Lou Benz 315. <laughs> Let's have some birthday cake. It's National Donut Day. It's yeah, every like, day is a national it, taco a national or national something. ice cream. There's like uh, the 7-Eleven day or whatever. I sees. People, uh, people make a lot of excuses that so you start to accept the excuses as being like reality. And they'll say, oh, there's no healthy foods near where I work mm -hmm. or everybody else brings in donuts where I work. And so they just kind of think that that's the way that they have to live their life. And they don't want to go through, and I understand it, they don't want to go through the extra time to yeah. uh, get rid of those barriers and blockades. We had somebody on our podcast who said, <clears throat> bring healthier foods closer to you and get uh, non-healthier foods further away from you. So just don't bring junk into your house. If you're gonna eat junk, just eat it when you go out. You have to go so out you, and buy one serving of ice cream yeah, rather than if, having a tub ice. Even if you yeah. ate out several times a week and just had a small dessert with your dinner, yeah. it shouldn't impact you that much if you're already training. Um, but to go out of your way and bring candy into your house, uh, it just makes it too easy for you to go haywire. I think that makes with what Lou said about hopefully the whole fitness industry is heading towards performance, mm -hmm. where at, rather than like stressing out over the scale, stressing out about every little detail, you start worried about PRs, you start worried about running faster times or, or jumping higher, whatever you start thinking about that, the combination of those two, hopefully we're heading in the right direction. There's a big difference between being too fat and being so fat. I think that we can all relate with being too fat where you're just like, man, I wish I just lost like five or 10 pounds of fat. I think yeah. anyone can probably get on board and do that. Being so fat is when you get yourself too far away from what so everybody else. Yeah. 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 You get to be like obese and then when you're that heavy, it's really hard to get yourself heading back in the right direction. Yeah, I, fe I feel like people don't think about like the repercussions like that their decisions at the moment are gonna have in the long run as far as like, either heart problems, like cholesterol, like just anything like that, you know? Um, it, like you said, people don't realize that it is hard work to lose weight, you know? It is hard work to gain strength, to be faster, to jump higher, and I think people don't have like the discipline or the mentality nowadays. Or the knowledge. Or the knowledge, and, and uh, you know, like there's so many things out there that people just throw out there, like uh, different diets that you can do, and people believe the first thing that they see if they don't yeah. know, you know, which kind of sucks sometimes yeah. because it, it uh, gears them towards the wrong direction and stuff, but I mean, it's all part of the process of learning, like trial and error and stuff, and I don't think people are willing to do that. As soon as they, th as soon as they fail, they stop completely, you know? And, uh, yeah. Because it's hard to lose weight, you know, to stay dedicated and to change your lifestyle, because it's like, if you want to lose weight, you have to eat better and you have to exercise, and sometimes people complain about having time or not, not enough time, you know, and so, that's always usually a big issue for people who... Yeah, the media does uh, kind of go like this, where like I said, there's these cool people like The Rock or plenty others, but then there's also the other grain going the other way, like mm -hmm. this detox, The other one pill. is way bigger though. Yeah, yeah, and it is still. they target people it or is certain still. demographics. TVs, newspapers, magazines yeah. are fucking you up, so... Yeah. Hopefully we just uh, keep winning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, I think a lot of it definitely starts with just nutrition though. Like, I yeah. feel like if you just understand the basics of like, a burger that you're getting from a fast food place is gonna be way worse than cooking something at home. Oh, and I feel like 
if you start in that direction first, it tends to be the easiest. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's that's the one that your body kind of responds to the best. And then that's where you start kind of seeing the results a lot faster in terms of like, you know, aesthetically. And then and then you can start with, you know, I know a lot of people don't have a lot of like, um, it's unfortunate to say this, but I feel like a lot of people are really lazy and they don't want to, you know, go on Google and be like, how do I, I agree. lose fat? Or like, they might not even yeah. know that. Or like, how do I lose weight? And then unfortunately, they get a lot of these like 30 day challenges that I mean don't really do anything and they don't really teach them like anything past the 30 days because yeah. once they complete that then it's like then what do they do no, and they're just very, kind of stuck. Very common and yeah. works because uh, weight loss isn't or fat loss isn't an issue in America. Everyone that tries a diet loses weight. It's just they gain it all back. Yeah, because yeah, they, they're not taught. You know, they, they have percentages of all these stupid surveys and stuff, but you're exactly right. Like, we they're not the, taught what they're doing. We see in the fitness industry too, though. People will take uh, they'll take some photos, they'll do a photo shoot, mm -hmm. they'll lose 20, 30 pounds, they'll get in great shape, and then boom, they're right back up. <laughs> 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 or, or they'll do His life is spiraling under control. I heard he got married. And <laughs> that was it. He's just ballooning up. Uh, but it happens to a lot of a lot of people, a lot of the fitness girls yeah. and stuff that we know. Oh, there's yeah. there's uh, oh, girls that go on stage that do bikini that when they tell you that that's what they do, you're like, are you sure that's what you do? <laughs> you look a lot, you look way too out of shape to even get back on stage. Yeah. But they'll do that. They'll have these 30, 40, 50 pound swings. It's insane. Whoa, that's, and that's not, not healthy. No, it's not healthy either. And I think that people lose sight of why you kind of get into. Uh, lifting kind of in the first place guys pretty much get into it for chicks. To, to yeah for chicks and to feel better about yourself to yeah, be able to ask a chick true. out on a date type of thing yeah and uh, to kind of bro out and, and uh, you know it's it's kind of a match against the other guys and stuff to be yeah. stronger than them and be bigger than them and so there's like that aspect to it but you forget that you get into it in the first place for fun yeah. and you get into it in the first place by making a conscious decision in your brain that's where it all starts to say, I want to do something with myself. I want to be better. I want to look better. I want to be stronger. Right. Right. There you have it, guys. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. Like the video, share it with all your friends. Until next time. Deuce, deuce. What are the misconceptions of the fitness industry? Oh, let me tell you something, pal. <laughs> Buddy, Tiger, Captain. Missed all right, buddy, let me.